Good afternoon and welcome. I'm Celeste and this is Celeste Creates. And this edition is not a floss tube, it is a quilty tube. I am back for quilty tube number seven. I have not filmed an actual quilty tube video since September. <laughs> so I've been very remiss in um, getting on here and sharing my quilting adventures with you. Now, in the meantime, I did do a um, Let's Begin Quilting video series, and um, that was really fun, but that took up a lot of, um, that was a lot of work. That was a lot of work to film all those videos and actually be putting the quilt together at the same time. And um, so anyway, I did do that. So that kind of, that took the place, I guess, of some of my Quilty Tube updates, but, I am back. Quilty Tube 6 was uh, September 5th. Today is um, Thursday, February 3rd, and I'm back for Quilty Tube number 7. So I have some really fun stuff to show you today. Um, I probably don't do as much quilting these days as I did before I got back into cross stitch, but I still love it and I really enjoy it. And um, I just have to divide my time a little bit more now. I tend to sit down and stitch in the evenings and um, I enjoy that because I can sit downstairs and be with my family and be in the thick of things. And sometimes I'll, I will sew up here in the morning while my kids are doing school. Um, but um, that being said, I've only got so many hours in a day. So, you know, I do what I can. So I've got quite a few things to show you that I've been working on and um, what I plan to work on um, in the near future. So, um, if you are a returning subscriber and viewer, thank you for coming back. I'm glad you're here. Um, and if you're new to my channel, welcome. I'm so glad that you are here. And I hope you will go back and watch um, my other quilting videos as well as the sewing tutorials I've done. I've done a project bag tutorial. I've done a stuffed tomato and a stuffed pumpkin tutorial. Um, and then I did that Let's Begin Quilting video series. So definitely, um, if you can go back here on my channel and watch those, I hope you'll enjoy those. Um, so I think what I'll start with, since I mentioned that um, video series I did, is the quilt that I made for that um, for that tutorial series. So um, I designed the blocks for this quilt, um, came up with all the measurements myself, um, came out with the layout. I put all that out there and put the quilt together, showed you how to do it step by step, just to really kind of give you a good introduction into quilting and um, sewing good seams and just different tips and tricks and things that I've learned over my 20 years of quilting and um, that helped me and to be able to share those with you. And then as well as doing a um, free motion quilting tutorial, um, because I do quilt all of my quilts here on my own machine. And um, I kind of wanted to encourage others to, to try that themselves. And I know some of you have, and I'm really proud of you. It's been really fun to see um, your quilts um, that you've made along with me in this video series. And so I don't think I've ever gotten to show you here on a regular quilty tube, the finished quilt. Um, so here it is. This was the quilt that I designed and put together in blue and white. My friend Annie and I, the proper stitcher, we love our blue and white. Always harder. It's much easier to show stitching than it is to show quilting. It's a really, really pretty quilt. This was inspired um, by this fabric bundle that I found at Cottage Couture Fabrics on Etsy. I don't know if she still has this bundle, but she has some other really pretty bundles. And this just reminded me of one of my favorite things to collect, which is blue and white dishes. Um, and so this was the block. It was a three-part block. And um, this is what I taught in my um, tutorial series. Here's the backing I chose. I showed you how I bind, how I free motion quilt. You can see I did simple, um, simple meander and loops on this one. And I love it. I have this one rolled up downstairs near the fireplace in a basket with some other quilts. So um, do go back and look at that video series and um, let me know if you have any questions. But I hope that maybe any of you who are um, 
want to get into quilting or new to quilting, I hope that it will help you um, learn a little bit more or try something new. So um, let me know what you think. I, I, hope it's, um, I hope it's a blessing to anybody who's a quilter or planning on being one. So, all right, other things I finished. Um, one thing that I actually, I showed it in my last video, I showed you that I had finished the quilt top for my daughter's graduation quilt. Now granted, my daughter graduated in May of um, 2021 and she took her graduation quilt with her this Christmas when she went back after Christmas. So it took me a little bit to get her graduation quilt done, but um, at least it's cold there now in Kansas and she can use it. And um, so it got done. So I had shown you the finished quilt top in my last video. And um, I actually got that quilted. My mother-in-law did the binding so that she could have a little piece of um, her work in that quilt for her graduation. And um, so I sent it on with Nicole. So I don't have the actual quilt with me because it is in Kansas. Um, but I can remind you, this was the pattern that I used. This is called uh, Merry Christmas Darling. It's a cotton way pattern by Bonnie of what was formerly Bonnie and Camille. And I actually made this version several years ago, a Christmas quilt. And then I used this quilt to um, do my daughter's graduation quilt in the Benedictine College um, school colors, the gray and the black and the red. So I quilted that and she took it back with her and she loves it. So I can insert a picture of that here and show you how it all turned out. So that was a lot of fun. I'm really glad um, that she has that and she can use that. So finish that. And then um, what else did I finish? <laughs> Some things that um, I had to go back and look at my Instagram. What were the things I finished in September? This is a small quilt. I'll open it up here in a minute, but um, I can't even remember what this is called. Forgot about the pattern. I did not keep the pattern. I got rid of the pattern. It was, um, it was a frustrating pattern for me and I don't, I know I wouldn't be making it again. And so um, I just didn't keep the pattern. I can't even tell you at this point what it is, but I had started this a year or two ago. These are fig tree fabrics and they're just beautiful. I believe this was the, um, I can't remember. I'll have to look it up. I'll put it down below the line of fabric. This, uh, it may have been chestnut street by fig tree. And, um, so these are small, um, leaf blocks. They were a lot of work. They, they, it just was not my favorite quilt to make, but I got it done and I got it quilted and it hung up for, um, with all my autumn decorations this year. I love bright autumn colors. I don't love dark autumn. <laughs> and so this was a perfect quilt and I do love how it turned out. I think it's beautiful. I backed it with some cute orange fabric that I had in my stash and, um, I love it and I'm really happy with how it turned out. It was just, um, it was more frustrating than I want a quilt to be. <laughs> um, so anyway, I finished that one. Um, another quilt that I completely finished, um, and I may have shown you parts of this in my last one, but I don't remember. Um, so this quilt is gorgeous. <laughs> it's a beautiful red and white. It's a two fabric quilt, but like it's three if you count the backing, but the front is just two fabrics. So it uses yardage. And this is a Camille pattern. So um, I don't have the um, color copy because I bought a PDF. This is from Thimble Blossoms. This is the Camille of uh, formerly Bonnie and Camille. And Camille is gonna still be designing fabric. Her mother has retired. But this quilt pattern is called Adventure and it required yardage. And so it had some different colors. You could do it, I think, maybe blue and green and red and aqua, I forget, but I knew I wanted to do a red and white quilt. So I used this beautiful red floral. It's a big quilt, um, red floral from Fig Tree and a white or a cream colored neutral from Fig Tree. 
And that's the block you're looking at right there. That's one block. So I can show you this direction too. Um, and then you have the, the these are the little um, posts and the there's a sashing in between, but it's really just two fabrics and you make these great big blocks um, that, have, that are a combination of nine patches and um, strips and it's just a beautiful, beautiful quilt. So this is still folded in half. So if I unfold it, it's a really, really nice size quilt. Yeah. So this one actually measures 85 by 85 and I have it downstairs. It would be lovely out at Christmas, but I went ahead and left it out because I have a few Valentine decorations out downstairs. I don't have very much, but I thought this was appropriate to put out for um, February and um, this beautiful red. I just think it's gorgeous. So pretty. And then I used a different um, fig tree red on the back and uh, got that quilted. I did, let me just see what I did. Oh, I did a, um, let me show this up close on my Instagram, but you can see that I did a um, kind of a petal. Call it a kind of an all over um, petal design with my free version quilting. Can you hear me when I'm talking behind the quilt of uh, petals? Oh, I love that. We are really enjoying using it and um, it's just beautiful. So, so much fun to, um, I don't know, to make all the quilts and give them to people or my kids have quilts. Um, I know I've made many quilts. I've sold them. I've made many quilts as gifts over the years. So, um, and then we have a ton around the house and it's just really fun to pull them out for the different seasons and use them and love them. And that's what we do with our quilts. Not all of them are hanging on the wall because, well, I don't have enough wall space, but um, it's really a fun thing to use them and enjoy them and wash them and um, cuddle up with them when it's cold um, or when everybody else is cold because I've got the air down really low. So um, I enjoy it. It's really fun. So then my next project, I think in my last um, quilty tube, I showed you that I was going to be starting. I had the box, the kit for Lori Holt's um, My Happy Place quilt, and I was going to be joining that sew along, that quilt along for that Happy Place, My Happy Place quilt. And I did do that. Um, I had not done one of Lori's applique quilts in a while. I do enjoy her applique, but really I am I like piece quilts best. Those are my favorite, especially scrappy piece quilts. Um, and so I did sign up for this and I did complete it, but by the end I was getting really tired and um, really had to push through to get it done, but I did it. So I, I had also signed up to do the really, really, really cute chicken salad quilt and I do love it. It is super cute, but I went ahead and canceled my reservation for that kit because I just knew I couldn't do another applique quilt anytime soon. So I'm glad I did that. Um, but I really enjoyed making this quilt. It just got hard at the end to want to keep going, but I did and I finished it <laughs> and it, the top is all done. I have bought some backing for it. I haven't quilted it yet. It might be the next one that I quilt. I think I want to hang it on the wall here in, in the game room, which is kind of half school room, half sewing. Um, I think it'd be really cute. So, um, I might quilt this one next and, uh, i got to see if I have enough batting to do it. So this one's going to be really hard to show you because it's a really, really big quilt. So I will insert a picture um, as well, either in here or at the end of these quilts. Um, so this, again, is the My Happy Place quilt from Lori Holt. And I did all of the applique blocks, all of the piece blocks, and it is assembled and done. So I can show you in parts. So there's... Um, the corner of the quilt with the border, super cute. There's some spools, I can show you this in pieces. The spools are pieced, that big flower design is applique. These are supposed to be fat quarters of fabric, and those are applique, as well as, these are all applique blocks. The 
um, the, what do you call them? Skeins of yarn, the ball and the knitting needles, the ball of yarn and the knitting needles, the crochet hooks. And these are supposed to be crochet flowers here. But, um, those are all applique. Let me see if I can adjust it here. I'll show you some more. So it's big. <laughs> so it's glad to be done. All right, next, what do we got? So cute. These scissors, those are applique. These um, um, skeins of floss are applique. This is a hoop and some cross stitch. So that is um, floss. I cross stitched that on there on the grid and then the hoop is all applique. So most of these are applique. There's the great big sewing machine. That is pieced for the most part and then has some applique on top of it. But that's a pieced block. And we've got the scissors, those are applique. And then we come down and we have, <laughs> oh, so patient. Um, under that, we have several pieced quilt blocks, which I just love, those are my favorites. It's kind of my favorite thing to make. And over here, the super cute needle book. So that's all applique. There's another pieced block. This down here, the little, um, I think that's like supposed to be the ironing board cover. That's all pieced. The iron and the spray bottle are all applique. And then this is the last one. Oh, tomatoes. The tomato pin cushions are applique. The jar is applique. I think originally this should have had bunches of buttons in it and I just really didn't want to do that. So I put an applique heart. And then here you've got a little, um, seam ripper. And then there's that. So that I will have to put a picture in at the end of how it looks all together. But it's really cute. And I know I will really enjoy having that on my wall. And I think uh, there's a blank wall right there. And I think it's gonna be really, really cute there. So that's my plan. Um, then what did I do next? Um, then I was just feeling like I wanted something quick. I wanted something quick and easy and just no, um, no cutting, no hard work. It just very simple. And so I, um, had bought for myself a really beautiful, um, jelly roll of, um, it was called Woodland by Tilda, Tilda Fabrics, such pretty fabric. So I don't think the Tilda fabrics are fabrics that I really want to have like in my stash all the time, but I really did want to make at least one quilt out of the Tilda fabric and this woodland was so pretty. I loved the colors. So I had a jelly roll and I already had this excellent pattern. Um, it is from Sweet Jane's Quilting and Design. I have bought many of her quilt patterns over the years. I have a couple of her books. It's called Between the Lines. I love her quilts. She just designs awesome quilts for pre-cuts and mini sizes. They're easy, fun, um, so I highly recommend her quilts. And so I, I also love quilts that are just the pre-cut. I don't have to buy any background and I can just use that one pre-cut and I end up with a really um, lovely quilt. So sometimes that's really fun. I don't have to invest any other um, cutting time or money to do that. So I use this beautiful Tilda Woodland Jelly Roll and made this quilt top. Finished this last week. Again, I can include a picture of the whole thing. Bits and pieces. It is beautiful. Love those fabrics. They are so pretty. I love it. Really beautiful. You hear my family down there. <laughs> so that was a really fun quilt. I really enjoyed making it. And again, grab a jelly roll and you are ready to make this quilt. She has an Etsy shop. And so um, you can visit her there. It is um, Sweet Jane is her Etsy shop name. So I really recommend her patterns. So next I really wanted to look at how many quilt whips I had and wanted to pull one of those out to work on. And so um, I was thinking I'd work on one particular whip and then I was kind of going through my drawers of projects and um, 
I think I have maybe five or six in, in progress. And um, so I was looking at this particular quilt and realized um, I've been working on this for a while. I started it when, I don't remember what year, but that Lori started the Farm Girl Vintage 2 quilt along to make this quilt, to make all the blocks for this quilt. I did uh, Lori's Farm Girl Vintage, the first quilt, and it is hanging over my um, sofa downstairs or one of my sofas. And um, I knew I wanted to make this one. I love making Lori's paste blocks. And so I was looking at this whip and kind of seeing, um, you know, oh, okay, well, how many blocks do I have left? And I realized I only had three of the six inch blocks left to make before I was done with all the blocks. And I, I don't think Somehow when I left it um, as a whip, I don't think I realized that I had that few to complete. Anyway, um, I pulled that out and this week I finished those last three blocks and actually sewed together one little piece just so I could make a test of how it would look. So from this Farm Girl Vintage 2, um, I pulled out, let me show you. I think I put a picture of this on Instagram the other day, but Here's all the blocks, and I know I've gone through a bunch of these before, and I'm not going to go through all of them today, but I will, you'll see the quilt top when it's finished. That's really cute. I love that one. So I had a bunch of, all my big 12 inch blocks were done, and I had most of the six inch, all I had left to do, <laughs> all I had left to do was three more six inch blocks. So I got on that this week and did that. So the first one I completed was this six inch block. I thought it's not the cutest. It turned out great. I love it. It was a little hard because I was kind of getting back into, I think I said I'm getting back into my tiny piecing mojo and um, that took a little bit, but it turned out super cute. Love that. Um, I'd like to make this one. I think this would be really fun to make a bunch of these in the, um, in the bigger 12 inch size and have a whole quilt full of houses. Then the next day I did the last two blocks. I did this one first and it turned out so cute. The strawberry jam block. Um, had an easier time piecing this little one. I think again, just getting back into the, um, feel of piecing those tiny pieces. Love that one. And then the last one I did, I kind of folded over, was this, um, it was called the winter quilt block and it's these four little log cabins together. And that was really fun to make. I enjoyed that. I like log cabins and, um, tiny, but not too tiny. So I did that. And then I went ahead and I'm just, I'm going to assemble the quilt in the, in the order that it is here. Um, but what I was looking at was that there is actually sashing around each block and then of course sashing in between these columns of blocks. And I thought all my backgrounds are different and I could still do sashing of one kind of background and it would turn out just fine. But I just really kind of wanted to be done with the quilt and I wasn't sure that the sashing was gonna add that much to it. And so I didn't think I wanted to spend the time sewing sashing onto all these blocks that I'd made. And so I thought, well, I'm going to give it a test. I, you know, just made this winter quilt one. That one was done and I found the goat and I just went ahead and sewed those three together um, as they would be without any sashing. And it's going to look great. So I'm putting together the whole quilt top with no sashing. So all the blocks will butt up against each other instead of having um, white space in between. But I'm super happy. I think it's gonna be really cute. Um, there are some blocks. I know I have to come back here and like give the chickies some embroidered legs and put some eyes on here. So I know there's a few blocks in there that need some embroidery. So I'll kind of do that as I go along. I don't wanna try and do embroidery once the whole quilt top is done. If I'd been diligent, I would have done the embroidery as I made the blocks, but sometimes I just don't wanna I don't want to stop. I just want a piece. So I'm going to be working on that one. Super fun book. And of course, in Grand Lori style, there's always um, bunches of extras in the back, different types of um, quilts I really want to make. Um, and I think it would be a great, great baby quilt is um, she is, hold please instructions for these wonderful um, barn star quilts. So this is one 36 inch square quilt and 
it's just one big block. And then um, she gives it the measurements as well for making the, um, you could do an 18 inch version of that same one. So you can make a big one or you can make the 18 inch as a tabletop or a wall hanging. So there's always amazing extras in all of Lori's books. So I love them. Um, speaking of Lori's books, I actually, this was one of the books that I found at the estate sale that I went to last year. This particular quilt, Prim and Proper, I think they did a sew along or a quilt along last year and I didn't do this one. Um, so I picked this up for a dollar at the, um, at the estate sale and I had, I don't have any plans to make that front quilt, um, that I know of. <laughs> but what I would love to make is a quilt. This is only the table runner version, but a quilt out of these, um, she calls them prim cabins. So log cabins. I love scrappy quilts, my favorite. Um, and so I would like to make those. She shows it here. She gives you how to make the block, but she gives you three different measurements and you could make it in a pillow. So I believe this is a 12 inch, uh, 16 inch and a 20. And I think she uses the 16 inches on that table runner. And I would either do the 16 or the 20 and I would love to make a whole quilt out of those beautiful um, log cabins. So that's kind of on my, my quilty radar as well as I bought um, or I reserved Lori's upcoming book. Um, Gosh, I forget how many quilts she said there is in it, but it's a scrappy, it's a scrappy quilt book. I'll insert a picture here. I can't remember the name right now. Is it Scrappy Happy? I don't remember, but I'll insert a picture of the cover of the book here. So I know I'm just gonna love, love, love that, that quilt book and um, we'll wanna sit down and start making some of those right away. So that is, um, that's my, you know, my upcoming plans. And then just to work on some of the whips that I have. Um, I do have, let me pull this out. I do have a whip that this is the one that I thought I was gonna work on until I realized that I only had three blocks of the Farm Girl Vintage 2 to make. So this is a quilt that I found in a magazine. I don't keep my magazines actually. If there's something I like, of course, I haven't bought a quilt magazine in forever because occasionally there'd be something I would like, but for the most part, it wasn't. So I'll show you the picture here. This was the quilt. I just love that. So much fun. And so I had a bunch of um, 1930s kind of um, fabrics and I have them. So I have all these parts pieced with the rectangle and the square. So I have all these colors, pinks and aquas and reds and greens and some purples, I think. And so then I was just going through making blocks that look like this. And then eventually I'm going to, I'll, I will connect all these blocks together. And I was being totally scrappy, no rhyme or reason, and um, really enjoying just putting these together wherever they ended up. So I have like one, Oh, that's a long one. I must have gotten a row done. See, I didn't even know that. So there's a whole row of blocks. And that was probably, that's one, two, three, four, maybe five or six blocks. Got those done. And so that's probably, that might be something I work on because that's really easy just to put those together and really enjoy and have fun. Again, like I said, I love scrappy quilts. So that's something I might work on soon. All right, just a moment and I'll be back. So I think that is all I have to share with you today for my quilting update. And hopefully I won't be gone so long next time and I'll be back sooner and have some other things to share with you. Um, I, I really enjoy spending this time with you. Um, and I, I enjoy getting to share both my stitching and my quilting with you here on this channel. It's a lot of fun and a real blessing. And so let me know if you have any comments or if I've forgotten something or um, anything I can help you with as you watch this video, please let me know below in the comments or give me an email. I've included my email down below. And so with that, I hope you have a couple of months, probably will be a couple of months before I come back um, of happy quilting. If you're a stitcher, stitching and all the good things, um, I'm a reader. So I'm either 
you know, my free time, I'm either reading or quilting or stitching. So, <laughs> um, that's, that's my fun. So I hope you have a blessed afternoon and, um, I look forward to seeing you back here soon. Bye.